Okay, so we've gone through sort of the basic style elements. Um, we've talked about rules, we've talked about selectors, we've talked about declarations, but up till this point, we've always been focused on pre-existing elements of the uh, HTML elements. So we've been talking about things like um, adding, you know, making all of the paragraph elements a certain uh, color or a certain uh, font family. Um, we've been talking about the H1s, etc. Um, you know, so we've been talking about the basic elements that we've learned about. But what really style enables you to do is what if you have a situation where you have paragraph one, and I'm just putting these things in here. Actually, let's make sure we're doing our, our good uh, grammar, and we'll do doc, uh, doc, doc type HTML, and then HTML, goodness, body. Sometimes I have problems with typing, and HTML. And then remember, we need to have our header tag that indicates that we're putting in some information that shouldn't be displayed, but that is valuable. And we're going to put in our style tag. Well, what happens, or uh, exactly, the uh, style sheet tag. So what happens if we said, well, we want um, this paragraph to be blue, and we want this paragraph to be a different font, and we want this paragraph to be, in, to be justified to the right or, or indented or something like that. Right now, we don't have the capacity to do that. We have to, you know, we have a style tag that says, you know, font family is uh, impact and font color is, or actually just color, is blue. Well, then that means that whatever I put in here, whether it's paragraph one, paragraph two or paragraph three is going to be treated the same way. Well, that's doesn't, that doesn't give you the kind of flexibility that you want to. Now, if we were doing the way we learned in the HTML lesson, right, we just go in here and we put in a font color equals, and we do that for each of the paragraphs. But we don't need to do that in Aspen because of something called uh, and I'm not going to, well, I'll write this. So we have things called IDs and things called classes. And that enables us to say for all of the elements, all of the tags that have this specific ID or this specific class, and I'll show you how we write that in a second, then I want these common attributes to go with it. And that may not make sense. I'll show it to you here in a second. Um, but we specify uh, and we create certain tags and then we can use those tags and that just opens the door to doing whatever it is that you want with style tags. So let's take a look here and let's say that we want this to be called um, paragraph one. Okay, So we want anything that has the, uh, this is what's called an ID tag. And I'll just put it up here but I'll have to erase it before I go. The pound indicates an ID tag, um, and you use ID tags if you're only doing it once. So for instance, let's say there's just one element on the page that you want to have certain style, then you would use um, the hashtag or pound sign, and then that would get ID, and I'll show you how you reference it. So this is just identification just means one thing. You got one thing you want to use, you do, you do that. Um, a class is something if you um, want an entire group of items to all have the same attributes then you use a class. And the way you indicate a class is with a period um, and that's going to let you know that it's a class. So let's see how this works in in actuality. So I'm going to remove this. Actually I'll just show you here. This is I'm going to comment this out. This is how you indicate a comment in um, HTML. And I'm going to delete that before I go on because putting in comment tag sort of screws up my page. But um, let's just get started here. So if, if I'm indicating that I want everything, I want this paragraph one to be a certain uh, style. So I'm going to make this paragraph one be 
ID equals paragraph or para one. Okay, so I've I've rather than it just being a specific or a, a, a general paragraph, I've given it a certain ID. Okay, and it's ID equals para one. Now, what did I say? How do I reference that up here? Well, rather than just being a P, then I have to give a hashtag para one. Okay, and that lets me know that everything that has that specific ID is going to um, inherit these attributes. All right, let me remove that. So right now, I don't have a general paragraph tag. I only have this specific ID tag indicated by the hashtag, and then I reference it later down here. So let's see if that works the way we expect. So that does. The I don't have a general paragraph tag, right? So I only have this. This lets me know that that could be a specific paragraph. Now, if I wanted to, I could create. Um, I could put um, a. You know, I could come in here and put a general paragraph tag. But what I want to do is I want to do a class tag instead. So um, for a class tag, I want to um, put in here. And let's just show how this would work. I'm going to say class equals second, uh, or I'll just call it not first paragraph. Now, I can call that whatever I want. I can call this uh, O'Leary's class. Okay? And if I want to do that, then I'm going to want that to be on add that class to multiple paragraphs. So let's take this and let's create an O'Leary's class style tag. How do I start a class style tag? Do we remember? I start it with a period. So I'm going to say O'Leary's class and then I have my curly cues in here and let's say this is font uh, family Georgia and color equals red. All right. So now what I would expect is that every element in my um, every element in my page has a specific style tag associated with it. This one has an ID associated with it that says it's impact in blue, right? And its ID is hashtag ID. And then this is class, and I use the same one, O'Leary's class, O'Leary's class, and this is going to give it a family Georgia. The way that I remember that is that class uses period, so it's like a class period. And then ID uses hashtag, you just sort of have to remember that one. But class period, if you want to use a class, then you indicate it with a period, okay? So save work. Oh, I must have done something wrong here. Oh, did I not save my work? No. Oh, look what I did. I did a grammatical error here, and I had the curly cue turned the wrong way. You now that can take, think about that. With all these codes, that could take a while to figure out. So let's uh, double check that that works. There you go. Everything works perfectly. That's good. I made that error on, on purpose, obviously. Um, okay, so here's what we wanted to do. We want to create an ID selector that can be used to change the font and color of specified text. So we do that right here with the para1 ID tag. And then create a class selector that can be used to center text. And then create a class selector to change the attributes only uh, the only elements that have the class selector, and then create your own custom class selector. So let's take a look at our uh, code here. So I created I wanted to create something that I could use to align text. So period indicates that it's going to be a what a class. So I have a I put a I created a class tag center. I had to make this up class tag center, and I added it to the H1, 
tag, right? So now the H1 is now this plus my attributes, class equals center, centered heading. And I use text align. So let's take this over here, copy that, and move it over into my page. So I'm going to add that tag here. Now period means that it's going to be a class. So now I've created this period class, uh, period center, and now I can center text. So let's take this H1. Now if I do H1, is that going to be centered? No. It'll, it'll have whatever the attributes are of the H1 tag, but it won't be centered. Now if I come in here though and I add to it the specific class uh, tag that I created, class equals center. Now this doesn't function the way the center, you, the center did when we were doing an HTML1. This is something that I've defined. If I want to, I could make this also a um, different uh, type of um, font or anything like that. I can put whatever I want here in the center. In fact, let's do that just for, for giggles. So we'll do color re uh, red. All right. See? All right. So what else did I want to do? Okay, so the last thing I want you to do is I want, so I'm going to have you skip number three. The last thing I want you to do is create your own custom class selector with specific rules and then use the div tag. Okay, so what I want you to do first off, let's start off down here, and I want you to just type in some text. Here is some text. I'm gonna get rid of this here, clean that up a little bit. And I want you to use our div tag. Now remember the div tag just basically divides out stuff so that you can show it. So I'm gonna do div, and right now I'm indicating this specific grouping of text. It's not using a general element, it's just whatever is in between these, uh, this div tag is what I want to use. Okay, so think about dividing it away from the rest of the page. And now I want you to create your own custom class selector and create a rule associated with it. So let's call this class equals your name here. Okay, so whatever you want to do, whatever you want to call it, you call it. And I want you to give that specific rules. So if we've created a class down here, right now that's not going to do anything, right? It's just here is some text. But I want to show you how you can make that uh, function however it is that you want. So I'm going to, we have our, um, remember it's a class tag, so it means we use period, your name here. And then this is, I've established the rule, and now it's up to you to put in the uh, selectors and the declaration. So you can make this whatever you want. Make it font, family, uh, impact. You can do color equals blue, you could do um, font size uh, could be 20 pixels, okay? Whatever it is that you want to, I just want you to create a custom tag and put it there. And so now, whereas earlier just general text because it has a class associated with it, but there's no rule associated with that uh, class, now I'm going to save Workshop web page and you can see it's down here. Let me um, change that a little bit just so that we don't get that mixed up with um, the other one. So we'll make that uh, Arial and we'll make it, uh, give me another color. Uh, what are the other colors? Orange? I don't know if orange is one of our primary colors here. We'll see. There we go. Alright, so that is your own custom class selector um, and the, that is your assignment. Alright, 